morning, everybody. This is John with Best Price Nutrition. Today, I'm going to show you how to calculate your calories based upon your goals, specifically um, those that make up your calories, your macronutrients, your carbohydrates, protein, and fat. A lot of times you get a question, hey, John, how do I figure out how much I need to gain weight, to lose weight, what have you? Um, so I'm going to cover that. So I'm going to take you guys over to the whiteboard here in a sec and hopefully answer all your questions. Okay, guys, back at the whiteboard, as promised. Um, so you'll see some interesting writing and stuff up there. So I'm going to explain to you guys how to calculate your calories and specifically your macronutrients, which make up your calories, your carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Uh, real quick over here, quick rundown. We have an in-depth video on metabolism, um, what this means real fast. This here represents the total amount of energy you're going to expend in a given day to perform your activity. Okay. Down here, you have your BMR or RMR, which is your resting metabolic rate or your basal metabolic rate. They differ insofar as BMR is taken after a 12-hour fast, eight hours of sleep. RMR is just what you do at rest. There's a small difference between the two, so we're just gonna kind of call them one thing here. TEF is the thermic effect of food. Quick example, you eat protein, you get about four, you get four calories per gram, but you're really only gonna realize about three calories per gram because there's a cost to extracting the energy from it. Protein has the highest thermic effect, so it's pretty static, okay? The more you eat, the more it goes up, the less you eat, the less it goes down. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, that's things like fidgeting, uh, standing, chewing, work, walking, things like that. And up here is the thermic effect of activity, also known as your exercise, okay? Um, you know, the more exercise you do, the more you're gonna burn, so on and so forth. That's your activity level, as it's commonly referred to as. So the question comes up is, you know, Jeff actually asked on the other side, said, hey, how do I calculate my uh, maintenance calories and you know there's more than one way to do this they all kind of get you to about the same place um, the biggest variance in calculating somebody's maintenance calories is how much activity you're doing how much exercise you're doing uh, in the metabolism video we covered non-exercise activity thermogenesis you have some control over that but the one that you have the most control of is your exercise activity so the more activity you have of course the more calories you're burning hence your maintenance calories would go up um, so how do we calculate this number is the question. So first and foremost, your total energy expenditure. For somebody who's active, I'm talking about somebody who you know, is you know, working out at least five hours a week with relative intensity. It's about 15 calories per pound. Could be 14 for some, could be 16 for some. Um, you could take that or 33 calories per kilogram of goal body weight. I say based on your goal body weight and do it within reason. You know, if you're trying to gain weight, let's just give the example, and you're 130 pounds and your goal is to be 250, I don't know why your goal would be that much. Well, then I would do it incrementally where maybe you go about 15, 20% above your current weight. But generally speaking, most people have goals that are within reason. If you're trying to lose a lot of weight, yeah, setting it down lower is, is actually, you know, okay, because it's going to lead to you taking in less calories. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and do an example here. So let's just say I weigh 200 pounds. I want to lose 15 pounds. My goal body weight is 185 pounds. And real quick, I'm not huge on the scale, by the way, for um, measurement because, you know, there's water weight and things like that are going to vary. So pictures are your best thing. But for the purpose of calculating this, we need a number. So let's just say 185 pounds, you know. I want to be lean. I want to see my abs, all that fun stuff. I take 15 calories times my goal body weight. I get 2,775 calories per day burned. It's about right, okay? I'm pretty active, working out about five days a week. Now, I want to set a caloric deficit. In other words, I want to take in less calories than I burn so that I can lose that weight. If I just eat this many calories and continue with my current activity, I'm going to stay the same weight. So I put a 20% deficit in. You can go with like a 10 or a 15% deficit, but the problem there is that the smallest mistake could lead you right back up to maintenance. So that's why at least the 20% deficit is where I would start. Um, you can go as high as a 50% deficit. If you go that high, I do recommend that you refeed yourself. In other words, maybe on the weekend, you eat extra calories. You eat at maintenance or above at a minimum. Um, so you don't lose too much muscle, um, you know, and or you maintain your muscle, okay? That is feasible. Now, 20% deficit puts us at 2,220 calories. So now the question is, well, how much protein, how much fat, how much carbs? So start with protein. Uh, if you need protein, it's essential. It's a range, you know. It can anywhere from three quarters to one and a half grams per pound of whole body weight. Now, if you're on a caloric deficit, 
you're going to be at at least a gram of protein per pound of gold body weight because protein A has a high thermic effect. Um, B, it's more satiating, it's more fi uh, filling, so it's going to make your uh, dieting that much easier. And you need it for muscle as well. Um, I also put up here in kilograms too uh, per pound of gold body. Uh, I'm sorry, grams per kilogram per pound of gold body weight as well for people. So the 0.75 is more for somebody who's on this big caloric surplus trying to gain weight. You can get away with less protein down to about that 0.75 because the fat and carbohydrates are protein sparing. In other words, they're going to be allocated more to be used for energy. So that protein is there to build structures, build muscle. Okay, you're, when you're taking protein, it's not just there to build muscle. It's your body has other ideas involved too. You know, you have skin, you have hair, you have nails, you have all these other structures in your body, organs, things like that. But anyways, I digress. So that's the range. I like to set it personally at about a gram per pound of gold body weight. I think that's a good start. Um, you know, the research kind of has found a range. It's a little bit based on a lot of trial and error as well as where we get that level because some of the research is lacking in matching um, calories with protein and comparing various caloric intakes where protein is static, you know, where we vary much from fat and carbs. But next I would set fat, and that's also a range 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 grams per pound of gold body weight. Um, and next is carbs, and I put it depends because there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Now, in no way, shape, or form is this me advocating people do a ketogenic diet because it's somehow better. All things being equal, if your protein's the same and you take in the same amount of calories with one person from fat or the other person takes in a distribution of fat and carbohydrates where that minimum is met, there's not going to be much of a difference. Okay? I covered that in the ketogenic dieting video. Sometimes people think, oh, I'm losing all this weight. Well, a lot of the times you're pulling water out of your system, your glycogen's depleting, things like that. So it depends, and you'll see why I put that. And my smiley, I know it sucks. But so we'll come down here, back to my goal. So I calculated my 15 uh, or my, my deficit at 2,220. So first what I'll do is I'll take my protein and I'll calculate it. Again, I set it at one gram per pound of gold body weight, 185 grams times four, because there's four calories per gram is how I arrive at 740 calories. My fat, I went ahead and put that at, uh, I think I put it right at 0.4, right in the middle, per pound of gold body weight, so I'm at 74 grams, times nine, because there's nine calories per gram uh, of fat, that's 666 calories. <laughs> um, 740 plus 666 gets us to 1,406 calories. I take my deficit amount of 2,220 minus that number and I come up with 814 calories left over for carbohydrates. I divide that number by four because there's four calories per gram of carbohydrates. Protein and carbs, four calories per gram, fat nine. 204 grams of carbohydrates. And then my total calories here would add up to my deficit of 2,220. So that's how much protein, fat, and carbohydrates. If you're using something like MyFitnessPal, you can go in and plug that into your goals. And then eat what gets you into that range. Um, eat nutrient-dense foods first and foremost if you have calories left over um, you know then you've got some more room to play around if you will you know in the sandbox with candy and fun stuff like that but um, if you eat all candy of course you're not going to be able to get enough protein or uh, fat for that matter it's going to be a bunch of carbohydrates so uh, those who try and say that you know if you do your calories this way it's you know you're just going to end up eating you know, candy and junk and stuff like that. It's just not true because you'd never be able to hit these levels. So um, that being said, nutrient density matters. Eat lean fish, pro uh, meats, eggs, dairy, uh, vegetables, fruit, uh, grains, starches, things like that. So have a nice variety in your diet is ideal. So that's how you calculate it, guys. Um, as I said, you can go with bigger deficits. Now on the reverse end of this would be a surplus. You would just take you know, your goal here, and you'd multiply it, you know, one point, whatever the percent is. So if it was a 20%, um, if you were looking to increase your uh, calories to have a surplus of 20%, it would just be 1.2 times this number. And then work off, get your protein, get your fat. You know, these are the floor levels I would set them at. And then from there, anything you have left over goes into carbohydrates. Um, you know, and everyone responds a little bit differently. You know, I mentioned the ketogenic diet video. Some people do better on low carbs. Um, the lower your calories go, the less carbs you're going to have to play with because it depends. If this were set at some kind of a, you know, like to put it like a 50% deficit, well, these carbohydrates are going to come down significantly. Um, and when you are um, tabulating your carbohydrates, don't count fiber into that. Um, for the most part, you know, fiber is not going to yield you any energy. Uh, some of it is going to be, you know, it's going to clean you out. Some of it can be converted to short chain fats by gut bacteria in the lower part of your gut. But by and large, you know, no need to include that. 
So I hope this helps you guys figure this out. I hope I explained it well. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section of the video or blog. Happy to answer them. Also check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thanks for watching.